what we saw last week when we watched the, with the documentary, it was a fascinating watch. Next year, I thought we saw a side of the Queen that we don't normally see. A very humorous, very funny, very light-hearted Queen that you don't always get to see, do you? No, I mean, she was certainly, uh, uh, gave me a very uh, enjoyable time showing around the gardens and uh, she seemed to enjoy doing it. The project, how did you get involved? You, your, your association with the Queen, in broadcasting terms, goes back many, many years, but it was the first, this is the first time you've really spent any considerable time with her, wasn't it? Well, uh, something was special was needed for, for her 90th birthday. And she, like Prince Philip, uh, enjoys the natural environment very much and, and, and is very keen on conservation and so on. And so to pick her areas of pristine uh, forest, uh, rich in all kinds of species, and say, OK, that's going to be kept forever that way, is a great, a great gift, I mean, a great boon to the, to, to the uh, Commonwealth. Um, and uh, those sort of areas are magical, and they are uh, diminishing. So for that, as a memorial, is, is pretty good. And does that explain your involvement in, the, in this particular project, project that led to the, 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 the chat, the, the wonderful chat that you had with the Queen in Buckingham Palace Gardens? Well, I was told about the project. Um, and said what I uh, and the Queen would talk about it, um, about trees and, and, and her garden and so on. And um, it was a great privilege to be able to be part of that. Um, and it was quite appropriate. Uh, the, uh, the, she doesn't travel as much as she used to. Um, and uh, um, uh, Prince Harry, of course, uh, carried the message all round the Commonwealth and it, as appears in the film is, is terrific value. Uh, obviously enchanting everybody he met and, and carrying the message. And that the message is uh, in all the Commonwealth countries and we saw what we see sort of in Namibia and uh, we saw Canada, we saw Epping Forest in the UK as well. It's about sort of uniting different parts of the Commonwealth and it's a very vast and varied uh, organisation of the Commonwealth, isn't it? But it's about uniting them in creating this canopy, this connected canopy all over the world. Yes, so the idea was put forward, uh, I, I imagine it originated uh, in this country, um, and uh, there was no compulsion on, any, on uh, anybody's part. I mean, do you want to join in or don't you? And uh, the number of people who, uh, countries that did so was, was immediately very, um, very substantial and still increasing, so I'm told. Your association with the Queen, in broadcasting terms, goes back many, many years. But it was the first. This is the first time you've really spent any considerable time with her, wasn't it? Yes. Well, uh, I was uh, uh, responsible for the Queen's Royal Broadcast in the early 70s uh, and for a number of years. So uh, I have been involved in in filming the Queen in, um, on a number of occasions, and uh, I was therefore asked, I suppose. Uh, uh, to have this conversation. Also, uh, the Queen is very uh, interested and enthusiastic about the natural conservation of the natural world, uh, as Prince Philip is. Um, and uh, uh, so this conversation of going around and looking at the garden was a great, great privilege, and, uh, and not which I enjoyed very much. You looked like you got on very well. You said you've met her a few times over the years, but this was the, presumably the first time you've spent an entire sort of 90 minutes or whatever it was in her company. To me, it looked like you really hit it off. You, 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 you got on extremely well. <laughs> um, well, I think we did, in point of fact. I mean, uh, she made it very easy for me, yes. And the conversations you had were she would say quite varied. They varied from the, the trees of her various children to the sundial that I think you pointed out was in the shade. <laughs> yes, yes. She, she, she pointed through a sundial and, and said, you know, there, was a, there it was, how nice it was. I said, and noted that they had placed it very cleverly in a, in a, under the deepest shade you could find in the entire garden. So it depended when you wanted to know the time, I suppose. <laughs> I'm led to believe that your impact on that sundial is it has now been moved into the sun, so you can now tell... Who the says time. that? The, the Buckingham Palace Gardener. So oh, really? Yes, you've oh. had an impact. <laughs> the sundial now does tell the time via the sun. Yes, yes. 
And there was the, the, the tree that I think, how did she explain it? It looks like we won't look at that one, someone sat on it or something. Like yes, uh, well, there is one tree. Um, uh, there was no holes barred, as you might say. I mean, one could talk about anything that we saw, I mean, including the, how infuriating it was to be there at Hyde Park Corner or close to it, where in fact there uh, ambulances and, and, uh, and f fire engines continually going past uh, the wall and, and uh, interrupting the conversation, how tiresome that was. Um, but it, it was, a, a, I mean, it's a very beautiful and big garden, of course. And throughout that stroll you had in the garden, looking at various things, uh, we got to see, would you agree, we got to see a side of the Queen that we simply don't often get to see. She was humorous, she was funny, she looked like she was really enjoying herself. Well, I, I, I would like to think that was the case, uh, because, uh, um, uh, well, that was, that was what I was there for, uh, I suppose, in order that she should feel uh, relaxed. I'll, mind you, I mean, you know, it was a great privilege to be shown around the Royal Gardens and so on, and uh, that's her home, and so, if she's not uh, feeling at home there, I don't know where she will. And you are, um, you won't mind me pointing this out, I believe you're sort of almost three weeks apart in age, both born in 1926. That's so correct, yeah. It's not often you get to film a, a conversation between two 91-year-olds. <laughs> True. <laughs> Which was really enjoyable. Well, I, of course, I, I did, yes. She also spoke... Um, Perhaps unusually, because of its slightly controversial context, she also spoke about climate change, didn't she? She sort of referenced perhaps all these forests being uh, planted around the world may help. She mentioned climate change, and it's quite, for the Queen, who has to tread a very careful line, it was quite unusual for her to mention that. Yes, the, the Queen certainly knows what's going on, um, and certainly knows what's going on in the world of conservation. And I think she is genuinely concerned about it and interested in it um, because she certainly talks about it. Um, and uh, I think this this idea, I don't know where it originated, um, but it's absolutely clear that the, that the Queen was, uh, was very happy to take it on. And in the, I suppose we shouldn't link the two, um, but she did also talk about Donald Trump, I think she mentioned him perhaps flying overhead in a helicopter. Yes, uh, the reason I mention that is actually because Donald Trump isn't known for his belief in the science behind climate change. And, uh, and yet within the film, we, we, as I mentioned earlier, we, we saw the Queen talking about some subjects that perhaps normally we wouldn't expect her to talk about. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I mean, Donald Trump is not one you'd expect the Queen to comment on the... It was, it was a passing reference, I think. <laughs> um, did you... Did you enjoy, I mean, you're a broadcaster with immense experience and, and you've done things all over the world that, that you know, you're, you're best known for. How different was this particular project to the, to the other films that you've made? Oh, ut utterly different. Um, I mean, uh, I'm not there to, I don't interview um, chimpanzees or zebras or whatever. Um, I, I just watch them. And so I'm not regarded, I don't regard myself as an interviewer. Um, but um, I mean, uh, having a conversation about it, about trees and about natural history, is something I certainly interests me, and, and it interested the Queen happily. Perhaps it was because you were observing her in the way that you do that you were able to get so much out of her. <laughs> um, I can't honestly say that I was a, aware of trying to do anything of the kind. Really, I mean, uh, the idea, the invitation was to walk around the garden uh, with the Queen and hearing what she describes about her garden and, uh, and what she likes about it and so on. So that was a great privilege and I was very happy to do it. And the Queen's never given an interview. Um, this felt like it could have been an interview, but I suppose one has to describe it as a conversation with rather than an interview of the Queen. <laughs> I don't think I asked her direct questions about anything. Um, uh, but I don't, I'm not aware of it. I mean, it was... But, you know, uh, it, 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 uh, she made it seem that there were no particular rules involved um, and uh, that, uh, that we were just doing that, just like anybody else to show me around the garden. It happened to be a pretty good garden. <laughs>
pretty good garden on a pretty nice day. And yes, a beautiful day. And you managed to, I think, el elicit things from her that perhaps other people just simply couldn't, which maybe is, you know, testament to your your skill and your your experience. No, it's kind of good to say so, but that, that, there wasn't any skill involved. It was uh, just a very um, pleasant stroll around the garden, it wasn't a highly privileged one. And we're very much looking forward to seeing it when it airs next week. So, uh, so David, thank you so much. It's uh, been an absolute pleasure.